So let's talk now about how to keep the microscope safe. So there are two sources of sort of danger to the microscope, things that you can do that will break it. The first is the dibenzyl ether. Again, this is a toxic chemical, so it doesn't matter if it's toxic for the microscope, but it is also a corrosive chemical. So if DBE is, is spilled on the microscope, it can severely damage it to the point of rendering it inoperable. So we have to be very, very careful in making sure we don't spill any DBE. So the main source of uh, a catastrophe, the, the, sort of the main reasonable risk that would ca cause a catastrophic spill of DBE would be bumping the air table. So the air table is floating, and that allows us to sort of take measurements without the effect of vibrations. Um, but as a result, it's not, you know, it's not bolted down here. So be very careful not to bump into this with your hip, your knee, or any other part of your body or the chair that you're sitting on. Because if you bump it hard enough, what will happen is this reservoir, which I will show you later, is filled almost to capacity. And if you bump the table, it will slosh the liquid here out of the reservoir uh, and into what's underneath the reservoir, which is a lot of very expensive optical and mechanical components. So please, please, please don't bump the table. Uh, the second thing is as you're manipulating samples, you may get little bits of DBE here because as you're moving things, I'll show you ways of minimizing that, but uh, as you're moving them, it's sort of inevitable that you, know, you might get a few drops. Please clean those immediately with ethanol and Kim wipes. So we have Kim wipes there, ethanol is there, to uh, minimize the chance of any damage to the system. And finally, if you do have a problem where you have a more substantial spill, for whatever reason, uh, please, please do not try and cover it up uh, in terms of not telling the staff. Let us know. Uh, if we don't know, uh, a big problem could turn into a catastrophic problem. So be very, very uh, mindful when you're using the system. There's also one thing you should keep in mind, which is there is no other system like this one in the entire state of North Carolina. So if this system goes down to, due to operator error, uh, you're not only making it impossible for you to do your science, uh, you're also affecting many labs that depend on it. So please um, uh, use it with a lot of care. Uh, if you do have a massive spill for, again, whatever reason, there is a spill kit in here that you can use to contain it, which has sort of absorbent pads uh, as well as uh, gloves, okay? But um, in, in many years of using the system, everyone has been very mindful. We've never had to use a spill kit. We've never had problems, which is not to say they can't occur. I've seen uh, major spills on systems and they aren't pretty and they cause catastrophic damage. Okay, so enough about the DBE. What other risks are there to utilizing the system? So the other main risk in this system's operation is crashing the objective. So the front face of the objective here, crashing that into the sample. So remember, the sample is going to be suspended here and you'll see that later. Uh, we have a joystick that allows us to move the sample up or down. That is the way that we look at different planes because if you recall, the light sheet will be roughly at this height in the microscope. The way we look at different parts of the sample is not by moving the light sheet, it's by moving the sample itself. So we can move it up or down while the light sheet remains in the same place and that's how we get a Z stack. There is nothing that would stop you from raising the sample so much that it crashes into this front face of the objective or lowering the objective so much that it will crash into the sample. There's no mechanical stop that will stop that from happening. So uh, to avoid that uh, happening, we have a number of uh, procedures. Um, uh, the way we do things minimizes that risk. But the main thing you have to keep in mind is when you're going up with the Z drive, which I'll show you in a, in a, in a moment how to do that, when you're moving the sample up, be very careful. When you're moving the objective down, also be very careful. There are ways of keeping track of where you are, where the front face of the objective is relative to the sample. Please pay attention to them because if you don't, you can slam the objective into the sample and that can crack this, uh, which will uh, damage a piece worth hundreds of dollars that needs to be replaced. So again, these are some of the risks. I don't mean to be alarmist, but you should be aware of them because we wanna make sure this system works well uh, for everyone. 
So uh, let's next discuss how to start up the system.